Hey, it's Mr. Bass, and today I am going to do a thorough walkthrough and give you a two-year update after owning the world's best kayak trailer. Stay tuned. You're not going to want to miss this. As I go through the walkthrough of this trailer, pay close attention to the condition of it. This trailer is over two years old, and I have ridden it hard. And uh, I haven't done anything to it to doctor it up other than wash it. Okay, so here's the trailer I'm talking about. It's the On the Water Innovations. And this is the single tournament trailer. They call it the Tourney Light. Here she is in all her glory. And it is really, really an awesome trailer. As I've said, I've had it for two years now. Two years and a few months, actually. I've driven it all over the country, and it has not let me down. It is just fantastic. So this trailer is 17 feet long from the hitch to the end of the trailer. It's five and a half feet wide. Total weight with all the options, about 450 pounds. It is extremely stable. It is a very, very stable uh, platform handles exceptionally well on the highway. So this is what the tourney light looks like driving down the road empty. And there's some guys that, you know, ask about bounce and this kind of stuff. And I've taken this thing all over the country. And uh, the only reason I'm driving it empty right now, I'm going to wash it. But it just rides great. It's high quality steel components, give it that little extra added weight, good solid axle. Everything about it is top notch and you never even know it's behind you, quite frankly. And it is built for distance. This bad boy, you can take it nationwide, coast to coast, you are not going to have any issues with it. I've taken it all over the country. I've driven it to New York. I've driven it to North Carolina. I've driven it to Florida. I live in the Midwest. I've driven it all over the country. The thing is just as solid as they come. High grade quality steel. Exceptional welding. It's just a great, great trailer. It is September 2023 and as of this date this trailer, the base model, sells for $2,550. And I'm going to show you what is included in the base model now and then I will show you the adders, the things that I've added after the fact. So the base model comes with a two inch uh, ball hitch basically. It uh, works on a two inch ball. It comes with a seven pin adapter. You can get the other size if you want, but I wanted a seven pin. And part of the reason why you'll want a seven pin adapter is if you're getting rigging lights or reverse lights, uh, you're gonna have to have the seven pin anyway. It does not have trailer brakes and doesn't really need them. It comes with this Ram uh, lift jack, trailer jack. It's fantastic. Uh, I really haven't had any problems uh, with it at all. And uh, very, very happy with the jack. Base model does not come with a spare, so I'll skip that. It comes with two adjustable steel bunks. And I do really love the fact that these are adjustable. So you can move each bunk wider or narrower. Uh, depending upon the shape of your boat's hull. That is awesome. You can get uh, bunks that are just straight or that bend down, and I think these ones that bend down and out a little bit are great for loading and offloading in the water. You can back this trailer right into the water, and I do back it into the water all the time. Now, one complaint that I've heard of with these steel bunks is that as the paint wears off, you start to get some rust 
but really I don't see that as a problem. We're not talking about any serious rust, but there is an option to have the bunks carpeted if you so desire. You get the steel frame trailer uh, on the base model. You do not get the ratchet straps. You do get the fenders. These are pretty sturdy plastic fenders that have running lights on them. Um, but I will show you over here, one of my fenders has cracked. <clears throat> Now you can replace this for about a hundred bucks. You can buy the actual plastic fender online. I just have never done it. I broke it a long time ago and I do not know how I broke it. Although I'm pretty sure I broke it crossing a very low Creek that had steep banks. And I think it twisted the trailer enough that this broke. I was not standing on it. As you can see, my rod tubes are in the way. So I don't ever stand on this side. I have stood on the one on the other side before and it's held my weight fine, but it's probably not made to do that. So I was going to show you the good, bad, and the ugly. I don't really think that's bad. I don't think that's a defect. I think that was my fault because I also, when I crossed that creek, did something else. My spare tire here, the spare tire hit hit the ground and bent actually bent look at this this is a very solid steel bracket and I actually bent it this tire used to be straight parallel with the tongue not anymore because uh, I hit it now you can adjust this you can remove this or loosen the bracket up and you can slide it up and down any direction you want in case uh, the location that it comes in doesn't work for you. The spare tire though is not part of the base trailer. I'm just focusing on what comes with the base trailer. I'm about done actually. Uh, the base trailer just comes as you see here. It does not have these uprights, does not have the rod tubes, and it has basic steel rim wheels. It doesn't have these fancier aluminum wheels. And then of course it has your you know, your typical tail lights. So that's what you're going to get for the base model, that 2550. <clears throat> Everything else that's on my trailer is an adder. I will show you on the screen the price currently of each adder. So without a doubt, I think you need a spare tire. And so that's the first adder I was happy to pay for. And again, if you want aluminum rims, uh, they, they, you can purchase the aluminum rims. I think they look much better, but hey, it's aesthetic only. So if you're on a budget and trying to save money, just go with the basic steel wheels, right? By far, this is one of the most amazing options ever. I absolutely love this. I put my kayak on the trailer. And then all I have is these two straps already built in, one back there, one right here. Goes right over the top of the boat, hooks on these built-in loops, steel loops, and you are good to go. Somebody asked me last time, what's the brand? It's called Cargo Buckle, and it's awesome. It's fantastic. Absolutely worth it. Okay, another adder that I think is definitely worth it. This backup light is fantastic. Highly, highly, highly recommend that backup light. I'll turn it on and show you what it looks like. Look how bright that is. And it works fantastic when you're backing the trailer up in low light conditions. And a lot of times if you're a tournament fisherman or a smart fisherman, you're going to be going out early in the morning when it's dark or in the evening. I think you can add more than one light, but I really think one is about all you need in that regard. Another great upgrade in my opinion right here. They call these the rigging lights. I've got one underneath each upright. I'll turn it on here in the bright daylight. Not sure that you can tell, but I'm telling you what, 
it lights this boat up like you wouldn't believe in the dark and you can rig your boat up fantastic on tournament day well worth the money all right now these uprights here um i got these uprights for a couple of reasons one i wanted the rigging lights but on the water innovations advertises that this is a great platform for a second kayak if you so desire and this is the one thing I'm going to disagree with them on. Uh, now, I think if you've got a really light throw-and-go boat, you know, maybe that Crescent Shoaly that's only 77 pounds is maybe the max I'd go. Or if you have like a Hobie Lynx, pretty light, 40-something uh, pounds maybe. But <clears throat> I was on a fishing trip with my buddy. He had a native watercraft Titan 10.5. Not a very long boat, but it's heavy. It's a it's a very heavy boat. We threw it up here, strapped it on, started going down the highway. It was insanity. <laughs> Vibration like you wouldn't believe. Wiggle like you wouldn't believe. Uh, these supports, in my opinion, kind of with this L shape, are right, not really made for a full-size kayak. Now, when I bought it, uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, Denny told me he's had guys that have put their Hobie Pro Angler 14 on top of here. <laughs> I, I would never, ever, ever do that. Uh, but that's just me. So I would keep that in mind. In my opinion, if you're going to be hauling two boats on a regular basis, uh, don't count on this, this top part. Now, you can have carpet put on the top, and they can do some other things that give you more supports that might might make it a little better but i don't think it's going to improve the sturdiness of these uprights and i think that was the problem you get some wind and uh boy it 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 did not do well let's put it that way but i'd say a really light throw and go sort of boat no problem throwing it up on the top at all now the uprights they're an adder these uprights and they do have these great uh, eyes or hooks, whatever you want to call them, that are on here. So you can put stuff on the top and strap it down. Uh, what I would probably think about doing is if you wanted to put like one of those big rectangular rod boxes or something up here and permanently mount it to, to this, then it might just be fine. But uh, I'm not going to put kayaks up there anymore. So the uprights are extra, but I think for the rigging lights, uh, they're they're a really nice adder. Not only that, the uprights give you the ability to attach rod tubes. These rod tubes were adders. These are eight inch rod tubes and they're awesome. I would not get a rod tube smaller than eight inches though. Absolutely, eight inches is the perfect size in my opinion. I'm gonna crack it open and show you the inside of it. One thing that I love about them is they're long enough that all of my rods fit in here even eight foot long swim bait rods will fit in here just fine. The reason you need an eight inch tube though is because with an eight inch tube, your paddle will fit in here just great. Your power pole anchor, as you can see right here, will fit in there just fine. And you can fit a ton of rods in there. These have very high quality latching lids that uh, you can lock and I'm very, very happy with them. Uh, I also think they look great. They're cool looking uh, if that matters to you. So what's the ugly? The ugly with rod tubes are that you really can't put rigged rods in here. Now I have, I've put rig rigged rods in plenty of times and it really reduces your capacity. Not only that, even with rod socks, really good neoprene rod socks, you're gonna damage rods. It's very easy to damage your guides in these rod tubes. And so on my next trailer, I'm gonna go away from the rod tube. I may have one rod tube just for spare rods with no reels, nothing rigged on them because I could put a ton of spare rods in there and not have to think about it. I also love the fact that I can throw my power pole anchor, my net, 
my paddle, those kind of things. So rod tubes have a place, but you really cannot put rigged rods in the rod tube and you'll be disappointed if, if that's what you want to do with it. The other problem with a rod tube is that they're very expensive. They're probably close to 350 bucks each for each rod tube. So I'll put the price on the screen here just so that you can see, but they're pricey, but they're considerably cheaper than the rod box. If you go with those Yak Attack rod boxes or whatever they're called, those have great advantages because you can put, they got roomy enough to put rigged rods in. So that's probably what I'm going to go with on my next trailer. But all in all, the rod tubes are still pretty awesome to have on the boat. Another adder that I paid for are these grease bolts. Uh, just pretty inexpensive maintenance for your leaf springs. Uh, he will sell you them without it, but to me, kind of a no-brainer. Another option you can pay for is you can have a locking lug bolt on each tire of the trailer if you're worried about somebody stealing your tires. So that covers all of the options that I have on my trailer. And when you add it all together, you're looking at a little over $4,000 for this rig as it sits right now. That is a lot of money. Uh, there's not many kayaks that cost $4,000. Uh, but if you're going to travel a lot, if you're going to if you're going to get in the tournament game, if you're already spending close to ten thousand bucks for a kayak with your fish finders and everything else, four thousand bucks for a tournament ready trailer, to me is worth it. I would not hesitate to buy this trailer again. In fact, I will buy this trailer again. Um, the next trailer I'm going to buy is going to be a double. Uh, so that I can carry two boats side by side, and it's going to be from Denny at On the Water Innovations. The guy is fantastic. He believes in quality. He provides and builds great quality trailers, and all you got to do is get on the phone with him and say, I want to add this feature. I want to add that feature. You can get winches to this if you want. You can get uh, built-in locks to lock your kayak on the trailer. There's a lot of other options. You can get storage boxes, and he's got options out the wazoo. Go on his website, check it out. You won't regret it. I'm not sponsored by him. I don't get any benefit, financial benefit from uh, uh, from On the Water Innovations, but I believe in the product. The product is a high quality product. He is a veteran. He's going to do it right. He's going to treat you right. Now, one last thing I will say about kayak trailers in case you've never used them before. Beautiful thing. You can back the trailer right in the water push your kayak off then when you're ready to load back your trailer in pull your kayak on you don't need wheels you don't need a cart awesome you're still going to get wet you're still going to have to fight the wind you're still going to have to fight currents uh, almost never do I get to unload or load without getting myself wet Almost always I have to get in the water at some point to get the boat loaded. So I just tell you that just so that you don't, if you've never had a trailer, you don't think, man, it's just like loading a, a bass boat on a bass trailer. You know, you can drive your bass boat on your bass trailer. Uh, but you can't really do that with a kayak trailer. And you definitely can't do it with the uprights. Now, if you didn't have the uprights, you probably could. You could... Drive your kayak right onto the trailer. Um, and, and then you might avoid getting wet. But it's just something to keep in mind. So that is the two-year update of my Tourney Light kayak trailer from On the Water Innovations. Definitely worth the money. Incredible how well it holds up. Incredible how well it drives. How stable it is. Go check it out. I do not think you will be disappointed. In fact, I think you will be very, very happy that you bought this trailer.
And that's all there is to moving, parking, storing this trailer. It's a dream. I hope this was helpful and informative. If so, please smash the like button. Subscribe to the Mr. Bass channel. I would greatly appreciate it. Until next time, this is Mr. Bass. Happy kayak trailer fishing.